All right, guys, my living on Datrex emergency food is finally over. It's been over for a couple hours now. Um, total experiment lasted, I, I was originally going to do four and a half days, which is like 108 hours. I just did a, a, a solid 100 hours. Um, once I hit that mark, I thought, all right, no point in continuing with this. But I want to explain my results, which have been interesting. Um, first of all, I want to talk about the, uh, the weight. Uh, situation. I didn't know if I would lose weight, if I would gain weight. Um, what happened was the first uh, about the first 33 hours was when I weighed myself. I weighed myself about three times, right? But after 33 hours, I had seen that I lost a pound. Well, it was 1.6 pounds. Okay, so a little over one and a half pounds. I lost that in weight. Now that's kind of what I thought would happen because I'm taking in much less calories, even though I wasn't being as physical as I normally would be. Um, I'm physically taking in less food, so I would imagine that my body would burn off the fat supply, right? Therefore, losing weight. What's interesting is even after that weight loss, um, weighing myself again multiple times, I saw that I gained that weight back as well as gain additional weight, okay? So from the beginning of this project to the very end, I gained a total of 2.3 pounds, okay? Now, the only way I can explain this, because I was taking in less calories, is that my body went into some kind of survival mode, realizing I'm not taking enough food in, and I'm assuming that I retained a lot of water weight. So the only way I can figure I'd gain weight by that is the water that I was drinking, I was retaining it in my body, okay, for survival. So um, initially, you would lose weight doing this, but ultimately, if you continue with a diet like this, this specific food, this specific diet, that you would ultimately gain weight from it, okay? Now the problem too is that when you go into survival mode, your body doesn't really just burn fat. Now some people might think that, all right, well if you don't eat or whatever, um, you're gonna burn energy somehow, so you'll just burn a bunch of fat and get skinny. That's not the case. Uh, oftentimes it, go, it surpasses your fat and goes right to your muscle, and you start burning muscle and losing muscle, and that's why you also lose strength, physical strength. Um, so you're not only just feeling weak because you haven't eaten, you're feeling weak because you're losing muscle mass. So it skips So You can actually be fat and then just get more and more weak as time goes on. So it's interesting. It's uh, really fascinating. Uh, as far as the whole physical state, um, sickness, anything like that, as I mentioned um, in one of the uh, updates I did, uh, I started getting headaches. The headache kind of was persistent. It, it went back and forth. It, it got kind of bad and then... Um, you know, I didn't take any medicine for it originally. Towards the tail end, it started getting really bad. I ended up taking a, uh, a bear, you know, which is like an Advil or aspirin or whatever, um, you know, to try to control it because it was getting pretty bad. Uh, some people brought up there's, there's possible variables, like it could have been a caffeine headache. And the idea behind that is that if I normally had caffeine in my diet and now I don't have it, it's kind of going through withdrawal. It's not, no, it's not that different from a cigarette smoker who stops smoking and you go through nicotine withdrawal. You'll get physical symptoms, sweating, nausea, um, jitterness, you know, kind of uneasy or nervous type situation, you're antsy. That's just from, it's a chemical imbalance. Your body's used to a certain amount of this chemical. You no longer have it, so you get affected by that. Uh, usually if you wait a long enough period of time, that stops. If you're, you know, you quit smoking, you go through all this withdrawal, but then eventually, you know, your body evens out. But some people can't make it through that. That's why they never end up quitting smoking. But as far as the uh, caffeine goes, um, I consistently drink one cup of coffee a day. I drink a cup of coffee black. Uh, it's not some monstrous Starbucks, you know, I don't know what they'd call something really big. It's not a bucket of coffee. Um, it's one normal sized cup of coffee. And it'll either be in the morning with breakfast uh, or it'll be after dinner, like as dessert. You know, nice calming days coming to an end, have a cup of coffee uh, to relax. Um, occasionally, maybe one day a week, I'll have two cups. I'll have one in the morning and in the afternoon or in the evening. Uh, I don't know if that's enough to go through um, caffeine withdrawal, but it's possible. That could have been one of the, uh, the reasons or major reason I was getting a headache. Besides that, um, overall feeling of being tired. And that was just pretty much, I saw that coming. Anyone would. Um, you're not taking in enough energy, so your body's not going to be able to put out enough energy, and you're going to feel tired. And I did feel tired. Um, as far as sleep, now I, I purposely didn't talk about sleep because I want to wait till the end to see how the overall effect had on me. Um, I found that I couldn't sleep as good. I was not sleeping as long. It was harder for me to fall asleep because my body was just not 
not normal. That was unbalanced, you know, something was going on. So it threw off all the normal functions of your body. Now, another thing I want to talk about, <laughs> which some people are interested in, and this is science, so we'll talk about it. Um, my, uh, my going to the bathroom, how was that changed? <laughs> it's not, not good. Um, out of the uh, uh, little over four days that I've been doing this, I went to the bathroom twice. Um, number two, okay, I peed a lot because I was taking a lot of water. That's naturally taking a lot of liquids. You're getting rid of a lot of liquids. Only went number two twice, so two number twos, um, and that's not a value meal. It was not good at all. And I can tell you because of the, the liquid intake, they were um, – <laughs> Loose, wet, loose bowels. Is that were you eating? Did that help? <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it wasn't good. It was kind of like after you eat super hot chili or something, you just get just diarrhea, and that's what it was. It was, it was nasty. Um, so your body's not functioning. There's there's problems going on. It realized something's wrong, and everything's kind of affected by that. Um, towards the tail end of the project or experiment, I started feeling nauseous, um, and I was getting heavy hunger where your stomach's growling bubbling, um, you get uh, a little indigestion because your stomach acid is, there's nothing for it to work on. So it's kind of bubbling around and you get a little bit of a, like heartburn, you know, a chest pain because the stomach acid is bubbling back up into your esophagus. And there's, you know, your stomach has a lining that your, your natural stomach acid doesn't burn your skin, right? But if it gets backed up into your esophagus, it actually burns or it doesn't burn you like it's on fire or anything, but it irritates your skin, which is very sensitive. And then you have a pain. And oftentimes people who have indigestion or they get heartburn, they think they're having a heart attack or something really wrong. It's not. It's just this, this acid that's kind of irritating your esophagus or your esophageal lining, if that's even what it really is. But anyway, I started getting a little bit of that, a little bit of an uncomfort, um, uncomfortable chest pain. And I knew what it was. I didn't think I was having a heart attack or anything. But ultimately, it's not good. That's the whole point here is your body slowly goes, okay, something's wrong. And you slowly shut down. Uh, had it been a real survival situation where I'm out chopping wood, I'm finding water, I'm sterilizing, I'm moving around, I'm doing things, perhaps even hunting to try to get some food, setting traps, doing this, taking care of that, washing myself, washing my clothes by hand. You throw in all this crap, I mean, if you're talking about actually surviving long term, it wouldn't work. Now, let's keep in mind what the purpose of this is. This was specifically designed for life rafts. You're not making fires. You're not gathering firewood. You're not filtering water, generally speaking. You're doing nothing. You're sitting there in the boat, trying and trying not to throw up. That's your focus. And it serves that purpose very, very well. This is not something that's meant to be long-term. As many people pointed out, it's not a well-balanced diet. You're not getting proteins you need. You will start losing muscle mass. It's empty calories. But it still serves a purpose. This has changed my view on this because on paper, something looks good, but in reality, there's a lot more factors you don't think about. Now, on paper, I would say, okay, here's how many calories a person needs. Here's what I want to do. I want to stock food for, let's say, a month, okay? And there's X amount of people I want to stock it for. So I would get this many packages of Datrex or whatever. And mathematically, that's going to work out fine. These people will have this enough calories to survive for a month. Well, let's say I want to do that for a year. Okay, so let me stock that much more. Let me do 12 times that amount of the stat tracks. The thing that, that I personally forgot and other people may forget is that this is not meant for long term. It will not sustain you for long term. However, for short term survival, bare necessities, it is perfect. And I still think it's, I highly recommend this for, I would say, up to a week of survival preparedness for calorie intake. Uh, I still recommend it for people who are hiking or doing day trips where you may be out in the woods or the wilderness for maybe a tops of two or three days. Um, so if for, for some reason you get stranded and you eat all your food, at least you have this and it's enough uh, calories to keep you going for a couple of days, you know, but nothing extreme. And in that specific case, you may be being more active. Okay. So it's an easy, fast way to get calories in you. And mo most importantly, the biggest selling point I think for this product is it's so compact, it's so small. And I've said this before, I can't find anything else on the market that lasts this long and is it has this much calories in the size package that it actually has. To have one of those those things, um, 
you know, packages, vacuum seal like that to throw inside your, your pack or bag, nothing can beat it for size and for shelf life. I, I still, you know, if you have something to suggest, I would love to hear it, but I still think it's the best option for that. But on the flip side of this, don't stock this for a month's worth of food. Don't stock it for a year's worth of food, okay? It serves a purpose for what it is, but that's all it is. But at the same time, it's not a fault of it. The product was specifically designed for this. So it works well for what it was made for. Um, interesting overall. I would never do it again. It was uncomfortable. A lot of it's mental. Um, I, I'm, I know I'm not eating, so I'm, I'm more hungry than I, I, my body really is hungry. And like I said, a lot of you guys out there have a diet that's much more of a, a caloric intake than I was having. So it would be even more of an extreme case. You'd feel more hunger. You'd feel more tired from what your normal activity might be. So uh, a lot of factors here. It was fun to try. It was cool. It served this purpose. But I'm here to tell you that this product is excellent for short-term storage, or excuse me, long-term storage, short-term use. Um, you know, if you have this in your car for just for calories, just strictly for calories, if you break down in a winter storm or something, or you're stranded somewhere, awesome, perfect. You, you can't beat it for a bob, you know, bag for your car or vehicle. Um, for small, short-term um, hikes or trips out in the wilderness, camping just as an emergency backup, you know, in addition to your regular food you're taking for you or your family, awesome, perfect. Just don't overdo it with this. This is made for short-term, so don't try to mathematically figure it out for long-term. It's not going to work. So that's what I got out of this little project. I thought it was uh, very fun to try. You know, you never know what something's going to be like until you actually get out and use it. And I highly recommend if you're the slightest bit trying to prepare for something, use the stuff that you're storing, okay? If you're storing some kind of water purification tablets, use them. See what that water is going to taste like. Is it going to taste like iodine? Is it going to be horrible? Are you not going to be able to drink it? If you're storing, you know, 50-gallon containers of pinto beans and you never had them before, but you know they last a long time, are you going to enjoy those? You don't want to make your life miserable. You want to store food, you know, that's, that's going to be good to eat. It's going to raise morale. You don't, want to, you don't want to be suffering in addition to suffering. Because when you're surviving and, and you don't have a choice, it's terrible. And at the very least, you want to look forward to your meals, not you know be disgusted by your food. Um, and anything else, I'm talking anything, your gear. You know, If you, if you bought a, a folding shovel because you want to keep it in your car in case you get stuck in the snow, you can shovel some out and get down in that gravel. Well, what, how do you know how good it is? Use it. When it's snowing, even if you're not stuck, get out there and shovel. Because the day you need that, the thing might snap right in half and you'd be screwed, you know. So use your equipment, test it, make sure it works, and then store it. Don't blindly store things hoping that it's going to do its job when the time comes. You want to be able to test your stuff to make sure you can have the confidence in your gear, whether it may be a tool, food, water, whatever. So anyway, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the very short mini-series. I didn't make a bunch of videos on updates and stuff because not a lot happened, but... Just want to tell you my experience with it. Um, an A plus for Datrex for its intended purpose, period. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you soon. Take care.